Welcome back, geometry students, to part two of section 4.4. We're doing corresponding parts of congruent triangles. In part one, we talked about why uh, angle side side is not a congruence postulate. So in this video, we're going to talk about the main topic, which is corresponding parts of congruent triangles. So our first example here has two givens, K, angle KBC and ACB are congruent, and it's, that is labeled in blue, as you guys can tell. All right, so that's labeled in blue. And then we have angle K and angle A, and that is labeled in green. Okay, and then we're asked to prove that two segments are congruent, KB and AC. So let's go high, uh, ahead and highlight our desired sides, KB and AC. Well, just based on KB. Yes, okay. I did that correctly. It just, my drawing's a little inaccurate. Um, you can tell that they're not equal. But just uh, go based on the givens, not based on the diagram. Okay, don't get out your ruler and call me out on this. All right, so angle K and angle A, they are congruent. Why? Well, the reason is it's given. Okay, we already established that. It's given. We always list our givens first. So the next one, it says given. So what's the thing that it wants us to put in? Well, it wants us to put in that angle KBC is congruent to angle ACB. Now, why is this not called just angle B and angle C? Well, we can't call it angle B because would angle B be this one or that one, okay? So we have to be specific giving the two endpoints of the rays of the angle. All right, next up. We have CB is congruent to CB. Hopefully you guys are getting really good at this one. We use it all the time. And that is that they belong to both triangles. Okay, now if you're wondering, oh, what are you talking about with triangles? Is it all I see is a four-sided shape? Well, take a look here. We have this triangle, KBC, and we also have, let's do blue. We also have this triangle, BAC, or ACB, however you want to call it. So we have those two triangles here. So they both share a side. Anytime they share a side, we know that they're gonna be, it's gonna be congruent side based on the reflexive property. So this is reflexive. All right, now where do we go from here? Okay, where do we go from here? Well, if you guys saw my other videos, you know that I like to do the following. I like to, let me get purple. I like to label what I have. So if I write, anytime I write congruent, I know I need to be writing a letter, either an S or an A. That signifies to me that I found an angle or a side. Okay, so then if I label this all correctly, I got angle, an angle, and a side. Let's go to the diagram, see what order it's in. Always go based on the diagram, not on the chart. It you might be AAS, but we have to verify it on the diagram, okay? So I'm gonna start at the green angle, and if I start at the green angle, let me use uh, this magenta, I go K, and I'm gonna go this direction because I'd have to skip a side and an angle to go to the next side over there, so you can't skip a side and an angle. Here I just skip one side, and then I arrive at the next angle, blue. So I have angle, I get to another angle, and then my next given is a side. I'm gonna do the same thing with the green. I have an angle, I go over here to the blue angle, and then I end up at a side. So I have A, A, S. So it matches up, and what do you, why did I do this? Well, usually when we are given that a bunch of things are congruent of a triangle, we want to prove the two triangles are congruent. So we're gonna say that these two triangles are congruent because of AAS. So first let's label our, our triangles. Let's say triangle, we'll go A, we'll go from A to C to B. So blue, uh, green to blue to the, the side. And then we'll say that's congruent to, same, same order, the green, K, the blue, B, and then the side, and along that side is C. So you have triangle ACB is congruent to KBC. And what's the reason? We already established that. It's either AAS, or if you want, you can write it as SSA. You don't have to put both, just put one, but I'm just uh, putting one of them, and that's the postulate. You don't have to put postulate. In my class, you don't have to put postulate, but if your geometry teacher says put the postulate, you better put the postulate. Okay, now, that, that didn't answer our question. 
We weren't asked to prove the triangle is congruent. We were asked to prove KB is congruent to AC. Huh. What do we do? That, I mean, I figured we, we did everything right. So what do we have to do from here? Well, we want to know, whoops, let's put three. We want to know if these are congruent. So how do we do that? That is where this guy comes into place. This guy is a very important postulate that we're going to be using a lot for the rest of the year. Okay. So this guy is very important. So this would say, okay, this just says, let me explain it. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. This just means if we have, if we have congruent triangles, then all their angles and sides are also guess what? Congruent. Okay. That's another fancy way for saying if you know the two triangles are congruent, as in this step right here. We saw that the two triangles were congruent in every way. Okay. We proved it by only using three things, angle, angle, side. Okay. So technically we didn't know all the other things, but since we found out they are congruent, then we can say, okay, if they're congruent, then we also know that all their sides and angles are also congruent. That means all the rest of the angles. So even though we didn't find this angle here, we know that it's gonna be congruent to this one here. Even though we didn't find that side here, we know it's gonna be congruent to that side there. And then of course, our target, AC and KB, are also congruent. They're the segment between the green angle and the blue angle. The green angle, the green angle and the blue angle. The green angle and the blue angle. That's that side right there. So even though I kind of messed up the diagram, those are congruent. So guess what? We proved it. We proved KB is congruent to AC. And we're done. Okay? Now, let me go over some common mistakes with this. Some common mistakes. Okay? A lot of times I will see students that use, and what I call this, I use a shorthand. We'll call this C POC TAC. Okay, I think that's the easiest way to remember it. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And I just let my students write C POC TAC. Okay, so that's the shorthand for it, so you don't have to be writing that the whole time or every time, whatever. So um, that's some common mistakes. Let's go over that. One of the most common mistakes I see people do is that they will, uh, number one, use CPOC TAC to prove triangles congruent. You can't do that. You can't do that. You're not proving triangles congruent uh, with CPOC TAC. The only times you can use, uh, the only thing you can use to prove triangles congruent are congruent postulates. We have AAS. Okay, the only thing that can prove triangles congruent are AAS, SAS, SSS, and ASA. So far, there's one more that we're gonna learn, but that's the only thing you can use, okay? Don't use CPOC TAC, okay? So I'm gonna erase this just so you don't get confused, but I wanna show you that you only can use those four things to prove triangles congruent. You don't give the reason that triangles are congruent for CPOC TAC, okay? Uh, I want to write something else next to it. This you should keep. Um, you need triangles. Well, I guess I could put it in number two. Um, number two is people uh, don't prove triangles. Don't prove triangles congruent first. Okay. If you're going to use CPOC TAC, you have to prove the triangles congruent first. Okay. This always needs to be the first, the a step before this one. Okay. You can't say, oh, CPOC TAC, and then later prove the triangles congruent. No. You have to prove the triangles congruent first. And I'm trying to think what other uh, other common mistakes. I think that those are the main two. Yeah, those are the main two. So you have, don't use CPOC TAC to prove the triangles congruent, and don't. Um, Oh, why, how did I frame this? It says use CPOC TAC to prove. No, don't use, we should say. Don't use CPOC 
to prove. And let's we'll just say, instead of common mistakes, we'll say, remember. <laughs> I'm sorry I changed this. But I don't want you to put like, oh, I should use CPOC tax to prove. No, don't do that. Remember, don't use CPOC tax to prove triangles congruent and don't prove triangles congruent first. Don't prove. Oh, I had it right the first time. Okay, so you want to make sure to prove. I'm so sorry, I botched this. You want to prove triangles congruent first before using CPOC tag. Boy, see, see, that's why I'm I'm glad I ended up rewriting it anyway because it would have been confusing if I didn't do this. Okay. Now we're gonna move on to our last example. I'm so sorry for example two, but we're gonna solidify it here. Angle TRS and TRL both equal 90 degrees. Angle RTS is congruent to RTL, okay? And then we want to prove RS is congruent to RL. So uh, basically what we're trying to decide here is given some of this information, super relevant problem, uh, sailing a boat and you know your distance to the lighthouse and you want to know if it's the same away from the tree. This might be useful if you, if you know some given distances, but we want to know if these two distances right here are congruent or not. So there's, there's our goal. Okay, and we know some things. So I redrew this triangle here so we could get an idea. I, remember, our goal is here, RS and RL. I'm gonna draw it underneath, actually. RS and RL, this is our goal. Okay, we're given that angle R, uh, TRS, TRS, oh, they're both equal to 90. So we're gonna write in here that this is 90 degrees. We already kind of have that. I'm gonna write it in both sides. Okay, we know that. We know that, um, RTS is congruent to RTL. That's another angle, RTS. Okay, so then we have this one. Okay, let's write it in. We have this angle given, okay, as congruent. And what else do we know? And we wanna prove that RS is congruent to RL. Okay, that's what we highlighted in orange. So we have this uh, kind of outline here. We know that RTS is congruent to RTL. RTS, RTL, and that is given. Okay, what would be the reflexive property here? Well, we see we have two triangles. If you're ever confused, you look at the two triangles here. Okay, what do they have in common? Always look to see what they have in common. And they clearly have in common this side right there. So TR is congruent to TR. Okay, now I forgot to do something. I forgot to do a very important step, and that is list what I have. I have an angle, and this is a side. Okay, now we're also given another angle. Uh, we're given uh, that, oh, no, here's our given. Angle TRS and T, angle TRL uh, equal 90 degrees, and that's given. Now, the reason why these are two different steps, really you could kind of jump to step four because you see that if they're both 90, then they're congruent but technically this requires a separate reason. So we're gonna say uh, right angles are congruent to other right angles. Okay, and I, that's obvious, I know, I'm sorry, but like that's, that's the full proof. Okay, so what does this mean? Well, this is another angle. Now, don't just look at this. This will say, oh, this is ASA. And it might be, but we need to check it out first, okay? And it is, okay? So we have an angle, we have a side and an angle, and in the other triangle, we have an angle, a side, and an angle. So this is ASA. So what do we do from here? If we know we have three uh, congruent uh, givens, then we can prove the triangle is congruent. So what triangles are congruent? Let's list it here. We have triangle, and I'm just going to call it SRT, is congruent to triangle LRT. I know what you're thinking. You're like, what? What are you doing? We're supposed to be proving RS is congruent to RL. Remember what I said up here. You have to prove the triangles congruent first before proving that anything about them, angles, sides, whatever, are congruent. So the reason we put here that the two triangles are congruent is ASA. Okay, last step. What is, what is our mission? Well, our last step is we wanna say RS is congruent to RL. And what's the reason, okay? Remember up here, don't use CPOC tech to prove triangles congruent. We didn't do that, we used ASA. 
prove tri triangles congruent first before using secpoc tag. Okay, so we we proved it congruent. So now we are free to use. Uh, let's use this blue color. We're free to use C poc tac. What does that mean? Well, because these two triangles are congruent, the blue, we proved that blue is congruent to purple. So purple is this one. We prove that these two are equal. And if these two triangles are equal in every way, then that means orange is also, these orange segments are also congruent to each other. So again, purple is congruent to blue. Therefore, everything about them, even these angles over here, Okay, are also congruent. This side over here is also congruent because we already proved them congruent using only three of the givens, three of the dimensions. So we know that the two triangles are congruent. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it ran a little bit long. Sorry for that little botch up. I wanna make it very clear that you should, if you want, write this down. Okay, remember, don't use CPOC tac to prove triangles congruent and prove triangles congruent first before using CPOC tac. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time. This is Mr. West, signing out.